Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Hank Strange. We're doing another Ammo Land breaking news with John Crump. And our headline today, Florida man posting meme almost gets his guns grabbed by threat assessment unit. Let's get into it with John Crump. John, what's up? Hey, how you doing, Hank? Uh, great, man. Uh, thanks for coming in. Did this actually happen here in Florida, man? Did this actually go down? Yeah, it's uh, in a place called Weston, which is part of uh, Broward County, mm -hmm. which highly liberal county. Okay. What happened was uh, a man posted a meme on a group for his like local town. Right. It because background. There is a lawsuit in Florida that's trying to get rid of preemption. Preemption right. means that state law is supreme. Yeah, right, and exactly. I think, like, for example, I'm in Gainesville. Gainesville cannot, according to Florida law, make up its own gun laws. That's called preemption, right? That is correct. Yeah. Broward County is suing to be able to do that. Uh, mm -hmm. What they want to do is make a so-called assault weapons ban mm -hmm. and a, a forced gun buyback. Mm -hmm. So this gentleman posted a meme of Charlton Heston mm -hmm. holding up the rifle from the 2000 NRA convention saying for my cold dead hands. Right. And I'm going to I'm going to try to run that in here. Let me see if I could cuz I'm I'm sure folks will want to know exactly what this meme looks like to see if th whether or not they think it's threatening, right? Um I don't think it's threatening. You don't think it's threatening either, do you? No. Okay. Basically, so here it goes. His point I've got was, it if you're going to come and confiscate the guns, have the guns to lead the people to confiscate them. Don't send other people to confiscate them and put them in harm's way if you're not willing to do it yourself. Yeah, so I'm throwing it up, and what it is is basically this looks like a Facebook post, um, and it's addressed to. Um, can we say this guy's name? Yeah, you can say everything. Okay, so Peter Van Antwerp, he wrote, Enough said, let them come. Since you are on the lawsuit, uh, Peggy Brown, Dan Sturmer, it looks like, and Byron Jaffe. I hope uh, that shows up with uh, to, to confiscate my weapons. So um, obviously very impassioned, not good grammar in there. I'm not going to hold that against him. And so it shows Charlton Heston at the NRA. This was like, what, 20 years ago? 2000. In 2000, okay, and and uh, holding up a replica, um, is that a black powder yeah. rifle? Yeah, a musket. Yeah, musket, and it says from my cold dead hands. Um, so he, so this is what the guy posted, basically, right? Yeah, he posted that. Mm -hmm. uh, the wife of Byron, oh, sorry, the wife of Byron Jaffe, who mm -hmm. is a, a city commissioner, mm -hmm. filed a police report against um, Peter. Mm -hmm. uh, her name is Beth Jaffe. Uh, mm -hmm. There's been run-ins between her and Peter's wife in the past mm -hmm. because Peter is on the conservative side and mm -hmm. his wife is active in politics. Mm -hmm. Beth Jaffe is on the liberal side mm -hmm. and totally anti-gun. So mm -hmm. they've had some run-ins in the past. Okay. So so when they we say run-ins, what kind of stuff are we talking about? Are we talking about social media run-ins or local neighborhood, you know, shouting yeah. matches? What exactly are we talking about? Uh, debating politics on social media, basically. Okay, so all social media stuff. So this particular post uh, with Charlton Heston and from my cold dead hands, I mean, you know, I don't really see any threats here. If they're involved in a lawsuit saying that they want to make um, – they want to make assault weapons, right, illegal and have a mandatory buyback. And this is a convers ongoing conversation. I think it's within his rights to say, yeah, you'll take that from my cold dead hands or throw up this meme. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she reported it to mm -hmm. police. Uh, it's worth noting that Byron Jaffe wasn't named in the post at all. The people mm -hmm. who were actually named in the post didn't even file a complaint against them. Right. Okay. Beth Jaffe, who wasn't involved in the post, and Byron Jaffe, her husband, um, he had to have known. Uh, mm -hmm. That's just my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. But he yeah. wasn't either. Uh, 
so what happened was the threat assessment unit of like the Broward County showed up mm-hmm. and they were fully swatted out in tactical gear and everything else. Okay. So let, let's uh, take a look, like a little quick step back here. Who is Peter Van Antwerp to, to the best of your knowledge? Like what's he's his background? Sem- what kind of guy is he? He's a semi-retired uh, executive. Okay. So he's not the type that's going to go around, you know, pulling off mass shootings or anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. He's mentally stable for one. Right. He's an executive. So he had a really successful life. Mm-hmm. You know, he, you know, is an older gentleman, mm-hmm. so he doesn't even fit the profile at all. Okay, he um, have... does he have any past, like, uh, military service or anything like that? His son is in the Navy. Oh, okay. Okay, but he himself, no. No. Okay, so he's a he's an executive, doesn't, nothing, you know, nothing out of the ordinary with him. He doesn't seem like he's the kind of person who would go out there and harm himself or anyone else, right? Yeah, well, he's a big philanthropist. A philanthropist. I can't even say the word, but yeah, philanthropist. Yeah, so, uh, yeah he donates a lot of money to charity <laughs> and raises a lot of money for charity. Right. Oh, okay. All right. And he's pro two A. He's pro two A. Yeah. I mean, okay. he's not a big gun guy, but he's pro liberty. I, mm-hmm. I would say more than two A, which um, you, you know, mm-hmm. he he believes in gun rights, even though he only owns a couple. And he doesn't even own like an AR. Doesn't own like an AK or anything like that. Okay, so and then this threat assessment unit. Um, what's the background on the threat assessment unit here? It's something new that Broward County started, I guess, since the whole since Parkland. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Park shooting. Okay. So they respond to threats. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so the police at first, and that includes memes on Facebook. I'm assuming anything that they could deem a threat. Okay. Did they have a warrant? Because you're saying here that they showed up at his home, right? Did they have a warrant or something like that? Or just basically this uh, wife of this councilman made a call, they showed up? No warrant. Okay. Uh, They did come into his house Mm -hmm. without a warrant. He's Mm -hmm. not making a big deal about that. Okay. He gave Um, them entry to the house? No, they came in. They came in. Okay, they just came in? Did they kick in the doors? How did they get in? They were banging on the doors mm-hmm. and when he opened the doors they came in okay with no I, warrant okay well, did they have guns drawn to your knowledge they had they had their guns um mm-hmm. they didn't point them at them because they came out uh he was in the shower okay so All he right. came out in a bathroom in like a towel mm-hmm. okay uh, and uh they came out pretty heavy mm-hmm. at first at the end, it seemed like they were kind of backing off a little bit mm-hmm. because, um, you know, they got better. And then they said, you have every right to know who who did this against you. Mm-hmm. So they gave him a card with a case number. Okay. It took them three weeks of going back and forth mm-hmm. to the police uh, to actually get the copy of the police report. Mm-hmm. So he didn't want to post anything about it or say anything about it until he had a copy of the police report. Okay, and just so everyone knows, like you're you're writing up an article on this um, that's that's going to be posted in Amoland News. So um, so they came in, they spoke to him. Um, you know what did they what did they tell him? Like what was the reason that they said that they were there? Well, there was a threat that he made. Okay, a threat that he made. And did they reference this uh, social media post that we looked at? No. It took him three weeks to actually figure out what the threat was. Okay. So he, he did, did, and he didn't know, right? He just knows that he, he was doing what he normally does on Facebook, conversations back and forth. He threw up this meme. It's been around for a long time, almost 20 years at this point. But he didn't think this was the reason why the threat assessment unit showed up. He had a feeling that that's why they showed up Mm -hmm. because they showed up shortly after he posted it. Mm -hmm. But he wasn't sure, and he didn't want to say anything about it until he figured out exactly what was going on and get the facts. Okay. So what what action did they take at his home? What did they do? Well, what they were planning on doing was, you know— Assessing the threat, maybe taking his firearms, mm-hmm. um, 
or taking him into involuntary custody. Mm-hmm. What they ended up doing is after they were very, very harsh with him, mm-hmm. they kind of softened up. Mm-hmm. So I think that they kind of knew what the deal was, that mm-hmm. he wasn't a threat. So they dropped everything. Okay, so they didn't take his guns. No, they didn't take his guns, but that's what they were there to do. Okay, so when they came, they didn't take anything from him. Uh, but you're saying at first they were kind of like forceful. What do you mean by that? Um, basically, they were, who are you threatening? Why are you threatening? Are you planning on doing anything? That type mm-hmm. of stuff, you know. Oh, okay. <laughs> are you going, you know, uh-huh. what is your plans? Mm-hmm. And he's like, dude, I don't have any plans. <laughs> what are you talking about? Okay. Did, did he tell you, like, how many people showed up? Was it two guys, four guys? I think it was four. Okay. All right. So four guys came and, in there and, with and uh, geared up. With full tactical gear, yeah, right. Full okay. kitted out. Right. They had guns. Yeah, rifles, all that good stuff. Okay. And they were trying to find out what his plans were. Um, so in the beginning, you're saying they were kind of rough. What made them back off of that? Uh, probably noticing that they were in a very, very rich house with mm-hmm. a former executive and a bath towel with mm-hmm. his wife and, mm-hmm. you know, he, he's a retired guy. Mm-hmm. Okay. And he just doesn't fit the profile at all. Okay. So, um, and, and okay, plus, go ahead. You know, mm-hmm. Plus, he's, you know, they're, they're known for political stuff, too. Oh, okay. And also, he gives a lot of money to charity, a lot of money to police organizations. So. Okay. Right. So, once they started talking to him, they realized that they didn't really have anything that was a threat. Um, so how long were they there in his home? Uh, I'm not sure of the exact time, but it was quite a while talking to him. Okay, so quite a while, but they left without taking anything from him. Yeah, they they determined that, you know, they're not going to take anything from him. Um, okay. It kind of softened up. Uh, the officer gave him the case and said, you have every right to know what this is about. I can't tell you, but here's the case number. Okay. So, and you got to remember, he's totally in a bath towel at this point. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So so basically they backed off of it. They gave him a report number and they filed a report, right? Yeah. They gave okay. him the report number of the report that was filed against him. Okay. And then um, he followed up. Is he is he going to take any legal action with this or what's going on there? He has every right to take legal action. Um, I don't know if he is he doesn't fault the police at all um he wants to make that clear that Mm -hmm. he supports the police and everything even Mm -hmm. though they made an illegal entry Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so he could i don't think he's gonna go after the police at all um it's my feeling whether he goes after uh the jaffees for making a false report i don't know i i don't think he has decided yet okay okay lawyers Right. So what I'm trying to find out here is what what do you think is the crux of this story? Do you think this is like abuse of power, you know, um, you know, uh, weaponizing, weaponizing things like red flag laws, even though I think you were saying that they didn't really use the red flag law no. here. Well, they didn't use that. Mm-hmm. They they went in there. No warrant. So that's mm-hmm. a big that's a big one. Mm-hmm. But they didn't even go to a court. They just showed up anyway. Right. Which but, is the which is like the dangers of red flag laws because in the long run, mm-hmm. you know, that's gonna yeah. happen more and more. Yeah. What I'm trying to figure out is the process of all this, right? As well as like what's the story that's actually going on here? Because if this councilman's uh, wife made this call, you know, who did she did she does she have like direct access to this threat assessment unit? Did she make a nine one one call? How exactly did these guys wind up over there, and how do they assess like what is a serious thing? You know, so if there's this ongoing conversation with with someone on Facebook, where basically you know they're talking about this lawsuit, which is a real thing here in Florida, you can't just make up your own laws in whatever cities or counties, right? People can't make up their own laws, but I guess they're trying to sue to be able to do that. And he's commenting on it, and he throws up a meme picture. Right, which has been used over and over again. Um, I don't see it as a, a threat. It says from my cold dead hand. So it says, if you if you decide to come take this from me, you're gonna have to take it from me from my cold dead hand. 
how does this conversation that happens on Facebook rise up to some dudes, you know, a, a, a tactical unit basically shows up at your house? Uh, well, here's the story. Beth Jaffe mm-hmm. went to the district office directly. Okay. Uh, she used the fact and dropped her husband's name saying, I am the wife of a city commissioner. Mm-hmm. This guy is threatening people on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Go do something about it. And they did. Okay. Okay. So it's definitely abuse of power. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, There's, you've like, like you and I, how mm-hmm. we would have filed a complaint. Mm-hmm. She went directly to the district office, used the fact that her husband is a city commissioner mm-hmm. to get the unit to respond. Right. Yeah. And this could have gone bad for him, you know. Um, it could have went really bad for him. Yeah, absolutely. So how does he feel about all of this? Obviously, like, so the point here, I mean, I think in the beginning of the story, we say that he got his guns grabbed, but the reality is he didn't actually lose his guns, only potentially, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the, the moral of the story is mm-hmm. that whatever you post on Facebook, people are going to be able to exploit that through red flag laws and other things mm-hmm. to get you basically swatted. Mm -hmm. Uh, Swatted is something that happens in gaming a lot Mm -hmm. where you Skype to call in a false threat. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing this as kind of like the equivalent of that. Mm -hmm. Right. If I could have got shot or a a police police officer shot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, listen, I think that there's, you know, obviously if you look like at the the First Amendment, people have the right to speech, right? Now, they they can't necessarily... uh, use that to incite violence or anything. Um, I think that this is, to me, when I look at it, it just seems like a conversation being had on Facebook that doesn't rise to the level of threats, but he did use a meme, you know, that uh, pro 2A guys often use, myself included, right? Charlton Heston holding up the rifle saying, yeah, you you know, you'll get my guns from my cold dead hands. Oh. Basically, the line there is from my cold dead hands. It doesn't even get into, you know. Yeah, but it's implied. Mm-hmm. Here's the thing, though, which is kind of scary. The police admitted that there was no laws bro- broken. Mm-hmm. So if you didn't break any laws, why are they showing up in full tactical gear? Yeah, right, right. Um, did they look, do you know if they looked at this first before they showed up or they just showed up because you said she went over there directly, right? Yeah, well, yeah, they looked at the meme and they okay. showed up. Okay, so when they looked at it, do you know, is there anything that says, like, what, what was their assessment of, the, of that meme before they showed up there? Uh, they have not given that up, but they did admit that there were no laws broken. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out, like, how do they, their, their whole, the whole name of this thing is threat assessment, right? How, you know, how are they choosing where they're spending their energy actually going to show up at people? Because if you look at this meme, I think this is pretty straightforward that you could probably, you know, I'm not saying don't follow up, right? We want these, we want these guys to follow up with things, but you could probably follow this up with a phone call instead of actually showing up at someone's house. Uh, Here's the thing. If if I filed a complaint against you for putting out that meme, Mm -hmm. I doubt that the response would have been the same. Mm Mm-hmm. That's just my personal opinion. Right. Yeah. Um, I see that, too. I mean, I don't know how any rational person looking at it goes, oh, this is a, the, you know, I mean, it's pretty it's pretty straightforward to see when there's threats. I know there's some news of things like that. Um, I know, for example, here in Florida, there was a guy that his son was getting bullied or one of his kids was getting bullied in school. And I think he did make a threat and it became a thing. But I don't see where this is a threat. Yeah. It's, it's not a threat, uh, especially yeah. uh, since the Jaffe's and Beth Jaffe know the family in question. Yeah, exactly. They know each other. They've been going back and forward. This is a political thing, political conversation happening um, on Facebook. And, uh, you know, if I if I throw this up again, I can give you guys, I think this is a reaction. What's Do you know what Western United is? Is that like a pro 2A group there or... No, it's the community group. That's a community group. Okay, so someone there, someone there, so who runs Western United? Do you know? 
I don't know who runs the actual Facebook group. Okay, because someone made a post on behalf of that saying this was a blatant misuse of police resources and what we believe was a personal vendetta. Um, is this what a commissioner's wife should be engaged in? Question mark. We assume he also had to know and approve the commissioner. Uh, what does this say about government power in Weston? If they can do this to us, it could be done to anyone. Um, oh, and just so we don't get a repeat visit, our response to this will be through entirely legal channels. Fortunately, have some very good attorneys. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so. he, he has some good attorneys. Right, right. I think they kind of realized once they went over there what they were dealing with. But not everyone, I think as it says there, not everyone in Florida has ask, access to these resources and not everyone necessarily is going to um, come away with it so, you know, so lightly touched, right, by this threat assessment. They could have easily, they, they were going there with the intention of taking whatever he had. Yeah, they were. Uh, he's okay. very well off and they probably, oh, it, it's just my assumption that, you mm -hmm. know, they saw that he's very well off and he, he's going to be able to fight it. And mm -hmm. the fact that they entered without a warrant, mm -hmm. you know, at, at that point, they kind of put themselves in a bind. Mm -hmm. They're like, yeah, this guy is not, you know, he's pretty smart. Mm -hmm. He has good attorneys. We entered without a warrant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. let's go ahead. We should off. back off of this. Yeah. So so tell me, you know, what are you going to write in your story? Like, what's going to be the headline or the, the moral you think of your story? And why does why did this guy decide to share what happened with him? The moral of the story is people can exploit anything that you put on social media mm -hmm. to red flag you or whatnot. That also shows the danger of, you know, red flag laws, even though there was not even a <laughs> warrant or anything at this point. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's just the danger is how anyone can use anything to, yeah. you know, get the I mean, I don't think this, I don't think this rose to the level of, um, well, let me see, it's not even, like in Florida, it's not even called red flag laws, actually. No. Um, what is it called here? I'm going to pull it up. Uh, it's basically an extreme yeah, risk, risk protection. Yeah, I think it's extreme risk protection order or risk protection orders. They haven't filed such a thing against him. So this is even outside of that before we even get to that. This is just like yeah. abuse of power. They've created some new some new tactical unit, which is often what happens in this stuff. We saw that happen after 9-11. You know, you got Homeland Security. They do a lot of nonsense, you know, um, inconvenience a lot of people and go further in some cases. Basically, this is a similar thing after Parkland, this threat assessment unit got created, and um, it's been weaponized by some people in power, right? It's definitely been weaponized, and that's what always happens with these mm -hmm. units. Mm -hmm. Yeah, It's just not here. There are examples of this everywhere. This is just the latest example. And I want to highlight that so the readers out there and the viewers, I guess, mm -hmm. will know what's going on because – on paper, these units might sound good, mm -hmm. but when in practice, usually they go a little bit off the rails. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so when can we expect your article to go up? Probably tomorrow morning. Um, where it's Tuesday now, I think, or is it Monday? It's Monday now. Sorry, so yeah. Tuesday morning. Okay, so this is probably going up Tuesday morning. All right, um, I, I'll be interested in seeing what people think about this out there. Let us know what you think about it in the comments. Um, you know, it's an interesting story, interesting times that we live in. Uh, not, not really necessarily good times. No, definitely not. Yeah, absolutely. All right, cool. All right, so don't forget to uh, like, share, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell so you can be notified um, every time we throw up live videos like this. Thanks to John Crump from Ammo Land News for hitting us, you know, with, with another breaking news story. And uh, let me reiterate, the headline of this one should be Florida man posting meme almost gets his gun grab, his guns grabbed, right? Almost. He came very close to getting his guns grabbed by uh, the threat assessment unit of uh, Broward. Is it – what's their official name? Uh, threat assessment unit is their official name. Threat assessment. We're going we're gonna to have to dig into this and do some research on this threat assessment unit. Um, yeah. I, I am right now. I'm trying to figure out where, where they responded to as well. 
Yeah. Um, I'm going to have to FOIA that because they're not too keen on sharing that, but they have yeah. to because yeah, it's public record. So I'm going to submit a FOIA request over to try to get more information. Okay, cool. Thanks a lot, John. No problem. Thanks. All right. Appreciate it.